There's something special about Korean dragons. Lend an ear to the tales of the dragon, and you will receive the infinite energy of the dragon that ascends into the skies. Did you know that the mysterious dragon ruling over rain and wind is the small mythical creature, Imugi? If you need the energy of the dragon in your life, go on a quest for the dragon. Your guide for this extraordinary trip around Korea is Richard Purvis, a student of archaeology. Through studying Korean culture, I've become interested in the Korean dragon, which is an important part of Korean art and history. And so today, I'll be taking you on a journey to discover the secrets of the Korean dragon. Finding Dragons, the Secrets of Korean Dragons. Do you believe in the legend of dragons? The first destination of our search for dragons is a place where an ancient mystery and an island-filled ocean await. It's Gosung, the land of dinosaurs. As one of the three largest dinosaur footprint fossil sites in the world, Gosung has an eight-kilometer long track of 5,000 dinosaur footprints that run along the coastline. Imagining the time of the dinosaurs, Richard searches for the trace of something. This is one of the most important natural history sites in Korea. And in this area, there are lots of well-preserved dinosaur footprints. And perhaps there are some dragon footprints in amongst them too. What did the people of the past imagine when they saw these 30 centimeter long footprints? Richard muses on the line between actual dinosaurs imaginary animals and dragons as he follows the footprints of dinosaurs which lived on the Korean peninsula 230 million years ago. It's bigger than my hand. It's big, but that doesn't mean that it's a big dinosaur. It's probably a medium-sized dinosaur, about four to five meters tall. <sighs> so perhaps the dinosaurs would have walked along like this. To find out more about the relationship between dinosaurs and dragons, he visits a dinosaur museum. This is the first Korean dinosaur museum, where visitors can see the various dinosaurs and pterodactyls that inhabited the world. Exhibited here are life-size bone fossils of dinosaurs, as well as the actual bones of oviraptors and protoceratops. In some ways, the gigantic dragon resembles a dinosaur. The fossils of about 800 dinosaur species have been excavated up to now, but they weren't confirmed as dinosaurs until 1840. However, there are people who claim they have seen real dragons. In ancient documents of China, there are several records of dragon appearances. And even now in the 21st century, some say that they've seen a dragon ascending to the sky in China. If the dragon is an imaginary creature, how did it first take shape in people's minds? One theory is that the dragon originates from Nagas, the spirits of water and rain in Indian mythology. Another theory is that people saw a dragon in the overwhelming force of nature. Then there's also the theory that it came from a giant reptile. Speculations about the origin of the dragon abound. Like the footprint of the dinosaur imprinted on the rock, the image of the dragon is imprinted in people's minds. So, amongst all those dinosaur footprints, there wasn't a single dragon footprint. 
But maybe that's because the dragons were all flying up there. Only the ocean knows the ancient secret, but it watches on silently. What makes Korean dragons special? Here's an exhibit on dragons in Korean art. Why are we so familiar with the dragon when it's the only non-existent creature among the 12 animals of the Chinese zodiac? Unlike Western dragons, which are depicted as monsters, Eastern dragons are revered as symbols of protection and power. They are found in the lives of people, as well as in paintings that depict the teachings of Buddhism. The dragon features the nine other animals characteristic in Korean art. Dragon is a god of water in Korean culture. That is why um, Korean people believe that it could bring rain and good fortune. Nine animals are supposedly hiding in the dragon. What are they? The dragon is a combination of the prominent features of nine animals, such as the nose of a pig and the antlers of a deer. Here, the number nine is the symbol of the infinite number. Hence, the dragon is an embodiment of the strong features of all animals. The dragon appears across the social strata, in palaces and folk paintings. The dragon was not only a symbol of the king, but it was also a symbol of hope for commoners who dreamt of ascending the ranks. The way to success was likened to passing the dragon's gate. In the West, dragons are born as dragons. Uh, but in Korea, they're born as something else. They're born as something called uh, imugi, which is a kind of a mythical python um, that comes in lots of different shapes. And we're going to go and check some of these out. It takes time and patience for a mythical imugi to become a dragon. An Imugi is a hornless, beardless creature that failed to become a dragon. It looks like a snake, a turtle, and fish combined. This artist has been drawing only dragons for 60 years. Over the six decades, he has drawn some tens of thousands of dragons. People who wish to repel bad luck and draw and fortune and success come to request dragon paintings. Yeah. 
a symbol of power and abundance. The dragon has always cheered on the adventurous spirit of the Korean people. Good things must be kept close. How about grasping a handful of luck with an impressive drawing of a dragon? Richard's next destination is Midyang in South Gyeongsang province. Midu which comes from the Korean word for water means a dragon. Midyang in turn means a field of dragons. There are 1,261 locations in Korea that use the word yong, which means a dragon. This already suggests that many regions have their own legends about dragons. So what about Midyong? Just how many dragons are there? Oddly enough, the dragons we found in Midyang were strange-looking rocks. These black rocks underneath me are all fish that were turned to stone a long time ago, and there's thousands of them. These rocks jutting up from the ground create a fascinating landscape. The legend goes that thousands of fish which came ashore to become dragons turned into rocks. The sharp part almost looks like the fish's mouth. These black rocks are thousands of imugis that failed to become dragons. Because these are supposed to be enlightened fish rocks, they will make a bell sound when tapped. They're supposed to be a rock that sounds like a bell, so I'm going to have a go try and find it. Uh, not that one. No. Uh, what? Ah, it really does sound like a bell. That's amazing. Um, I wonder if that has anything to do with dragons. Midyang is filled with legends and hopes. What other stories will it reveal? This extraordinary stone also looks as if it's hiding a secret. Oh look, a uh, dragon egg. Let's see if I can pick this up. Ooh. Oh, nice and light. So, my wish is to ride a dragon. So, Let's see if this worked. It's not moving. Oh, no. Uh, looks like I won't be riding a dragon anytime soon. Oh well. This place in Mono Mountain is shaped by mysterious rocks. Apart from the thousands of fish rocks and the wishing stone, another mysterious rock can be found here. This five meter tall rock is said to be the son of the dragon god of the sea. The large rock is the cursed prince. What fascinating powers does it have? So there's a story that if you take a coin and push it up against this rock, the coin will stick there. So I'm going to try it out and just to prove there's nothing on either side of the coin and there's nothing on the rock here. Let's try in a different place. Amazing. So it's true. <laughs> the coin really does stick. I'm not even sure how. <laughs> wow. And so the legend continues. I 
I've heard that in this area you can see a blue and a white dragon. So let's go and see if we can find them. Oh, oh, look at those two dragons over there. They're huge. Two large dragons face each other before the endless horizon of Gimje. What is happening here? Now that's the size that I imagine real dragons would be. And when you look at their claws, they look like they're about to fight each other. Each dragon measures 54 meters in length and five meters in height. The grandeur of the dragons, with their steel frames and scales made from bamboo trees, will make your mouth drop. <laughs> The two dragons standing tall in the fields of Gimje are closely related to Byakkorje. All of this land, all the way to the mountains right over there, used to be a, a, a reservoir a long time ago. That's just massive. Byakkorje is the oldest irrigation facility in the east, which used to supply water to the vast fields of Gimje. It was built 1,700 years ago during the rule of King Chimyu of Bengche. Now there's only the mere trace of an irrigation system left. The legend of the good white dragon of Byakkorje and the blue dragon that tried to destroy the banks of the reservoir reflects the importance of the water controlling dragon in an agricultural society. It's really heavy. <laughs> I'm like a dragon. <laughs> Every October, under the two great dragons, the exciting Ji Pyeongsan festival takes place. As the vast field suggests, Gimje is the hub of agriculture and rural culture. To protect water, the lifeline in agriculture, farmers had to guard the Byakkorje from the blue dragon with their life. Their resolution to protect Byakkorje and thus water underlies the myth of the two dragons. The dragon tug of war is a release, a form of play after hard work. The people pull the rope together, praying for an abundant year. The dragon is like the god of water or rain, and therefore the entity that determines the livelihood of the farmers. The Ji Pyeongsan festival attracts more than a million visitors annually who come to watch the endless stretch of the horizon and enjoy the excitement of the rural culture. At night, the spectacular lantern and torchlight events heat up the festival. <laughs> At this exciting festival, visitors will meet the dragons of Gimje. They will take the dragon Sintamani in their eyes and minds, and also the bright and fiery energy that lights up the sky. Richard visits Tongdo Temple, which has a history of more than a thousand years. What kind of dragons are hiding here? At a site of such a long history, 
there are bound to be numerous traces of dragons. The large Guryong Pond, where nine dragons used to live, was filled in to become the small pool it is today. This is Yongpi Rock, which was stained by the blood of dragons. In this area, there's a story that these black marks that you can see all around here are the place where some evil dragons crashed and died. And you can see the marks spread all the way down here like this, running down the rock, and they're spread over a really wide area. Uh, so I think when those dragons crashed, it must have been quite a sight. The pond where nine poisonous dragons lived was sealed by the Gunggang Stairs. Why are dragons, usually considered sacred, depicted as nine venomous creatures? In the Shilla dynasty, Buddhism was the national religion. The early depiction of dragons shows the clash between dragons and Buddhism. Of the nine evil dragons, one surrendered to the monk. And because the dragon surrendered, the monk built him this pool to live in. Now, this bridge is a symbol of the monk's victory over the evil dragons. And people believe that the dragon that surrendered still lives in the pool today. So let's see if he's at home. Anyone here? Where is he? I don't think he's at home. After that, dragons were portrayed as entities that protect and promote Buddhism. Just as the dragon boat sails across the rough sea to reach paradise, the dragon stands at the front as guardians of Buddhism. At the Songbo Museum of Tongdo Temple, visitors can see the Guryongdo Yukko folding screen which dates back to the Joseon dynasty. It features nine dragons in vivid colors and shapes. These icons are related to the legend of the birth of Siddhartha. Wow, these dragons are really different from the other dragons that I've seen so far. I mean, these guys are really fierce and they look like they want to come out and kind of attack you, especially their eyes. He looks like he's staring straight at you. The nine dragons which fly in and out of the clouds are threatening, but also beautiful. The <laughs> 그런 의미와 마찬가지로 불교의 설화에서도 구령은 부처님을 목욕시키고 부처님을 보호하는 그런 의미로 많이 등장하고 We're about to see a festival that turns the night into the day. It's the Buddhist Lotus Lantern Festival and in it you can see lanterns of all different shapes, sizes, and colors. But the best ones are the dragons. Let's go and check it out. The Lotus Lantern Festival held in Seoul to celebrate Buddha's birthday is actually an ancient religious festival that has become a cultural event for all. <laughs> Various events continue into the night with the Lotus Lantern Parade. Colorful lights brighten up the dark night. This is a site of Korean beauty, created by Korean traditional paper, Hanji, and light. Hundreds of thousands of lights shine on the streets of Jongno. The star of the festival is, of course, the dragon, the wave of the dragon dance symbolizes the ups and downs of life. <laughs> the 
There are different shapes and colors of dragons, and fire comes out of their mouths, which people really enjoy. The traditional marching band and percussion music work up the mood of the festival. At a festival that brings people together, there will always be a dragon. The street where you will see the most dragons is probably Chinatown in Incheon. It was the first Chinese community to appear in Korea after the open door policies in 1883. Here you can see dragons everywhere with the turn of your head. The Peiru Gate is adorned with golden dragons. In this paradise of dragons, you can meet the most dynamic dragons at the Chinese Culture Festival. The dragon had nine offspring, which are not actually in the shape of a dragon. And people believed that these could help and protect them. And so you find them all around where people used to live. For example, this one is called Imun. Now, it likes high places and it doesn't like fire, and so people would put it on top of buildings in order to stop the building from burning down. The dragon with superpowers has nine very different suns. One likes to cry, so it will sit on top of a Buddhist temple bell. One resembles a tiger, so you can find it on a prison gate. One likes to eat and drink, so it is carved in dishes. And one likes to kill, so it's engraved in knives. These nine dragon sons can be found deeply embedded in the everyday life. Come to this Chinese restaurant to try a special dish, which is called the Black Dragon. Uh, so let's go inside and see what it tastes like. In the kitchen, the chef is busy cooking the black dragon. <laughs> but the ingredients don't look anything like a dragon. The sea cucumber with shrimp is dressed up like a black dragon. So what does a black dragon taste like? 오롱해산 나왔습니다. 음. Okay, so this is um, the black dragon. Not really made of dragon, um, but I'm interested to see what this will taste like. So let's uh, let's have a look. Nice, a bit chewy, but um, it's the taste is excellent, actually, really good. Mm, black dragon. Mm. Now that he's even tasted a dragon, it's time to become one. 
Ni hao. The dragon symbolizes the power of the emperor. All emperors in the history of China called themselves the dragon. Here I've got my um, Chinese outfit. I have a dragon on the front. Surrounded by dragons at the moment. Excellent. <laughs> 2012, known as Imjin Year, is the year of the Black Dragon. This time we'll look for the black dragons hidden in the city streets. Our search leads us to a campus in Seoul. Jung Gak Wan is the former Sung Jung Jun of Gyeonggi Palace. Is there a black dragon on this campus? found it, the black dragon. The black dragon is soaring into the sky from the high ceilings of the Jungkook Wan. The pair of black dragons looking proud and powerful has witnessed the pain of Korean history and the dignity of the king. Jungkook Wan now functioning as a sanctum in the Buddhist college, was originally a palace built during the rule of Gwanghae Gun. When Japan invaded Joseon 420 years ago, the beautiful palaces were burned, damaged, and pulled down by the Japanese. Jungkook Wan found its way to its current location by surviving the turbulent history of Korea. Hangibelobadon the Black Dragon possesses the spirit of a hero who will save the world. It embodies the heartfelt hope for an independent nation. What kind of food did the Joseon kings eat for their health? Yong Bong Tang was served only on special occasions, even in the palace. The Korean word Yong means a dragon, and Bong means a phoenix. Is there a real dragon in Yong Bong Tang? Richard decides to check this out at a restaurant. So I heard that in uh, the uh, Joseon dynasty in Korea, the kings used to eat dragons. Is that yeah. true? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's not a dragon. Yeah, 이게 자라라고 그랬는데 이 자라는 200년을 넘게 산다고 그래요. 근데 이제 이걸 잡수게 되면 무병장수로 더 오래 살실 수가 있고 스태미나의 그 좋은 그 식재료예요. The ingredient that replaces the dragon is the turtle, which is known to have a chewy texture and a savory flavor. Also, it is known as queen soup. Turtles can also be replaced with carps. Carps which have 36 scales is considered the best of the kind. The ingredient that replaces the phoenix is the black ogol chicken. 
Other ingredients are 20 medicinal ingredients, including six-year-old red ginseng and porios cocos. These herbs will make the soup both tasty and nutritious. The turtle, ogol chicken, and 20 medicinal herbs are boiled together until the soup is rich and dense. The finishing touches to the boiling soup are chives and mushrooms. This completes yongbong tang, a soup made with the energy of the dragon. Hmm. Looks much better than I thought it was going to be. Hmm. Delicious. 이거 우리 집에서 담는 술인데 한번 드셔보세요. Thank you. Thank you very much. 임근님처럼 드세요. Thank you very much. So, cheers. Well, I feel really lucky to have been able to uh, eat like a king and hopefully uh, eating this has given me the power to uh, fly away like a dragon. So I'm going to get some more. The last destination of the trip is Gyeongbok Palace from the Joseon Dynasty. It's like the heart of the nation, where the 500-year history of a dynasty still lives on. Three, two, one. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Welcome to Gyeongbok Palace. All right. All right. Oh. Yeah. Hello. What are you wearing? Uh. 이것은요. 리시복입니다. 리시 아세요? Um, I think so. That's like a Chamberlain kind of. He helps the king, right? That's exactly right. 저 아니 경복궁이죠. 경복궁은 왕이 사는 곳이에요. 우리가 왕 하면은 드래곤이죠. 이곳은 어 인간의 세상입니다. It's the people's side. People's side고 저기는 왕의 세상이죠. 그래서 이 다리는 인간의 세상과 왕의 세상을 연결시켜 주는 다리입니다. 이 다리를 건너므로써 우리는 왕의 세상으로 들어가는 겁니다. So we have to go this way, right? Sure. Okay, let's go. Beyond the Yongje Bridge is the world of the dragon. Let's cross it. The original Gyeongbok Palace was a city-state of 7481 sections. The most significant structure is Gunjungjun which means to rule diligently. It's the largest wooden structure that still survives, and it's where the most important national ceremonies were held. It looks like a dragon. A dragon? Yeah. There are many hidden symbols inside the palace, which also means there are many hidden dragons. In the past, there are many different things in the past. There are many different things in the past. There are many different things in the past. Guarding all sides of Gunjungjun are four guardian gods. The vermilion bird is the guardian god of the south. The blue dragon is the guardian god of the east. The guardian god of the west on the opposite side is the white tiger. The black snake, shaped like a tangle of a tortoise and a snake, is the guardian god of the north. The dragon has always symbolized the skies and the king. The king's throne is called the seat of the dragon. 
Likewise, the king's garments are called the garments of the dragon. <laughs> On the ceiling of Gunjongjun, where the king held office, two dragons, each with seven toenails, are positioned around the Sintamani. 100 years ago, I wanted to make this Gunjongjun. I wanted to make the Chinese from China. At that time, I always wanted to make the Chinese from China. So, I wanted to make the Chinese from China. 그 용의 발가락보다 더 많은 발가락을 만들었다는 그런 설이 있어요. 그래서 일곱 개가 됐다 그래요. Sa Jung Jun, which means to tend to national matters thoughtfully, is where the king worked. And a wonderful dragon awaits inside. Yong Hui-ru is where foreign officials were received and served. Two dragons were placed in the pond of Yong Hui-ru in hopes for national prosperity. Currently, one lives in the pond and the other in a museum. Richard, here you can see the building and the building. 어떤 차이가 있나 한번 보세요. 이 뒤에 있는 건물은 이 가문, 지붕 위에 화이트 프레임이 돼 있어요. 근데 저쪽에 있는 건물은 없어요. 아, 예. 그렇죠? 네, 이곳은 왕비님과 왕이 생활을 하는 곳이에요. 그러니까 어, 어린 왕이 태어나는 곳이죠. 그런데 한국 사람들은 저 화이트 프레임을 갖다가 용마루라고 얘기해요. 근데 용이 만약에 위에 이렇게 누르고 있으면 이 아기 용의 기운과 위에 있는 용의 기운이 충돌하기 때문에 일부러 왕비님과 왕의 침전은 이 화이트 프레임 즉 용마루가 없어요. Oh, that's really interesting. That's that's interesting. In the king's private chambers, the king is the actual dragon, so the roof is not topped with a ridge called 용마루. 이 한국에 정말 많은 용도 있죠. 예, 이런 용을 만난 소감이 어땠어요? I've seen so many dragons. I think what I've learned is that dragons are really close to Korean people's hearts, and I think they're a symbol of the strength of the Korean people. 저도 이렇게 궁궐을 다니면서 느낀 게이 백성들에게 용은 왕이잖아요. 근데 정말 왕에게 용은 백성인 것 같아요. 그래서 참 많은 걸 느낀 것 같습니다. The dragon is alive and well in many areas of Korean culture. Its power touches everyone, from the king to the common people. Anyone can become a dragon, as long as they hold on to the dream of ascending to the heavens. <laughs>